precious promise, Son of God and Son of Man. Heaven's glory in a manger has come to us in Bethlehem. Oh, Messiah. What's up, FLC family? Merry Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas, y'all. My name is Jana. Today I'm here with Susie. Hello, hello. We are now in the new set of our Unshakable podcast. Fancy, nice. fancy. I know. With the new microphones and everything. I Can I get these chairs in our yeah, office? Yeah, like, right? Just take it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell Pastor. Don't no. tell Pastor. Just kidding. <laughs> Don't watch the video, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we want to let you know that make sure you get connected to our Unshakable podcast because that's where we're in. We're in the yes. setting of where they film the podcast every week. Um, just go to our YouTube channel, get subscribed, um, and check out. It's called Freedom Life TV. And we're on week four today of our new series called Names of God. Yes. So what else do we have going on? We also have something coming up is our New Year's Eve services, which will be December 31st. Yes. We have two times, the 9.30 and the 11.30 a.m. as usual. But we will also be having an evening service. So excited. To be celebrating the New Year coming and to end the year together yeah. um, that'll be at what time? Today? That'll be from 10 p.m. till 12 a.m. So yes. we're also going to be doing a potluck so to represent all of our nation so if you are skilled in something really good bring it we'd love to share yes. um, and then we're going to do worship and prayer and at the end of the night we're going to have 
fireworks. Yeah. We're ending it with fireworks, you guys. I'm so, so excited. So please come on and join us that night to end the year mm -hmm. all together. Yeah, for sure. And just remember also every Wednesday at 7 p.m. we have prayer here with Pastor if it's not first Wednesday. And along with that, every Wednesday we also have 412. Yes. And 412 for those that are youth in this building right now, the ones that are in high school or college, we encourage you come out. It's an event for all of our youth in the community. We have it every Wednesday at 7. So, yes. um, and where else can they find out about more more information. Events. If you mm -hmm. guys want, you can go onto our YouTube channel and yeah. subscribe to that. If you have a moment, do it right now so you can stay caught up on everything we have going on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That we get notified. And on our website, we have all the information about all the events. Yes. Um, so let me go ahead and just pray for us today. So, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for bringing us together here in the house of the Lord, Father. I thank you for each and every one that's here watching us, watching us online or in person here, Father. Ask you to bless them ask you to bless the service that we can be here and worship you father we can be here and pr praise you and um hear your word father that is so powerful and um to fellowship one another thank you father for this wonderful sunday and i ask all this in your son's name amen amen all right you guys go ahead and say hi to somebody meet somebody new make yourself known make other people comfortable <laughs> yeah a wave a hug whatever you want to do See you next time. Bye.
My part's supposed to be really short. So I'll get ready, you know, right to it right now. If this is your first or second time here, take a moment. I need to get on the treadmill. That's what I need to do. Holy moly. I have capacity in my lungs. FLC guest to 45888. If you'll text FLC guest to 45888, you'll receive a form. Fill it out in its entirety. Send it back to us. We want to connect with you. If you'd rather use a QR code, use a QR code. If you want to use a connection card, use a connection card. We just want to connect with you. Why? Because no man is an island. We need each other. Iron sharpens iron. We need one another. He made the church. The church was his idea. And he's inviting you to come. To come. All ye faithful. All right, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> I already did welcome everybody. Welcome. Welcome to church. We're so glad you're here. First and second time guests, you can do that. If you did not go to the welcome booth on the way in, please do it on the way out. That's for first and second time guests. There's gifts for the first time guests. There's gift for the second time guests. So please make that available to yourself. Why don't you guys greet one another while I greet the online audience? Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. We're so glad that you're tuning in, probably at home, preparing some way for the day. It's a good day. Jesus Christ was born. Uh, well, we don't know actually what day he was born on, but we celebrate his birth on this day, and we're so glad that you chose it to tune in and celebrate with us. Welcome. We love you. Welcome again, everybody. I see a sea of red. I see a lot of red. I put it on my lips. I don't have any red sweaters or dresses, but I tried. It was on my teeth the last service. My sister's like, you have lipstick on your teeth. And I'm like, oh, great. We're going to take an offering up at the end of the service for like Jesus. We're doing a special offering. That's for people that call this church their home. But if you want to give, you can give by way of, uh, you know, cash or check through our giving stations at each door. There's several ways to give behind me if you want to do that. And we give because we get to. So many times we put everything off on the sovereignty of God, but actually God set it up in his sovereignty that we would get to partner with him. Why does God want to partner with us? Because he wants to reward us. He wants us when we die to be able to stand before him and receive a reward. So he makes space for us to partner with him. So one of the ways you partner is by your giving because we want to see his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? So let me pray over the offering if you want to give. Again, there's several ways. Father, we're so grateful. We're so grateful for all that you are. We're so grateful that we get to partner with you in this harvest field, in this kingdom, for your great cause to see salvation come to mankind and to see men get to know you personally and to live with you daily. Father, we worship you and magnify you and thank you that as they give, it's given back to them in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We worship you today with our giving and with our very lives. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Guys, give it up for Rebecca as she comes.
Awesome. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you guys for coming out today on Christmas Eve. And uh, I know it's not Christmas Eve evening, but it is Christmas Eve. And uh, we decided to do things a little differently this year than we normally do on Christmas Eve and bring it into the mornings. But thank you so much for being a part. I know there's a lot of things you could be doing today, but I think, especially if you have any type of relationship with Jesus, that this is the best place to be on Christmas Eve. And because in all the things we do and all the stuff that's happening and Christmas parties and secret Santas and everything else that's going on, you got to bring it back into focus. And not that you were out of focus, maybe not, but maybe so. But this is a great day to do that here on Christmas Eve and just be able to think about Jesus. I know that tomorrow we celebrate his birth, but we really know that Jesus was born September 2nd, which is somebody's famous, somebody famous birthday. I don't know who that is, but anyway. But it's so good to see you. you guys look awesome. Tell your neighbor, you're looking awesome today. So welcome to Freedom Life. My name's Greg. If you're a guest today, again, I want to say welcome to you first time, second time. My wife, Brandy, she was just up here. We are the senior pastors of this church here, and we're just so thrilled you decided to be with us. One more time, I want us to do this. Give all of our guests, first, second time guests, maybe third timers, four timers, I don't know. Give them a good hand clap. Come on. Welcome to church on Christmas Eve. So uh, we've been on this series called Names of God. We've been doing it all December, probably one of my favorite series of the year. Uh, really been enjoying it. Today we're going to continue on with it. We've been looking from the scripture in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse number 10 that says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into that name, and they're safe. Amplified Bible says, High above evil and strong. I love that scripture. I've meditated on it many times, and I've used it in my life many times, but I love how that we can run into the name of the Lord. But as we've discovered, and if you have read your Bibles in any, uh, in any amount, you'll discover that God has many names, and the names of God are to describe his character and what he provides for humanity. And in this passage of Scripture, it says the name of the Lord. The word Lord there is the name, his name Yahweh or Jehovah. And the name Yahweh or Jehovah is really the redemptive name of God. It is also his proper name. It means the self-existing one or the eternal one. And it says the name of Yahweh, the name of the Lord, is a strong tower. Thank God for the tower of his name. It also means like a castle, like an impenetrable castle, high above evil and strong, where you can run into that name and be inaccessible to the evil one. And I don't know about you, but in this hour that we're living in, we, we need to know how to run into that name like never before, because there's a lot of evil going on in this earth. But thank God that even in the midst of evil, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of whatever may be happening, we actually have the names of God that we can discover and find out and run into those names. And the, we've been talking about the seven redemptive names of God in this series. We start off with Jehovah Jireh. How many people know that Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide? That's a pretty good name. Because we need a provider like never before. I'm telling you, and the, the world is so uncertain. Uh, you know, the markets are uncertain. Money is so uncertain. But heaven is always certain. God never changes. And he's Jehovah Jireh. He's always been Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Jireh. And he will always be Jehovah Jireh. We talked about Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is present or the Lord is here. How that he is our ever-present help, the very present help, well-timed help, well-proven help and assistance in times of trouble. Amen. We, that, that's the name of the Lord, that we can enjoy his presence. I have a covenant right to enjoy the very presence of Almighty God. I'm never alone. And he's not just there to hang out and go, hi. He's there to do something. And then we learned about Jehovah Rapha last week. Pastor Brandy pre preached on Jehovah Rapha, shared her testimony of healing, and, and, and helped us to see that Jehovah Rapha wants to be ever-present in our lives, healing our bodies, because he's always been Jehovah Rapha. He is Jehovah Rapha, and he will always be Jehovah Rapha. 
He's the Lord, my healer. So today we're going to talk about another one of his names, and we run into those names or into his name by our faith-filled declarations and our faith-filled praises. When I begin to magnify who he is, I mean, he's got a lot of other names. I mean, he's Adonai, the supreme being, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He's El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough. I mean, he's Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord my righteousness. He's Jehovah Ra, the Lord my shepherd. I mean, he is wonderful, counselor, a mighty God, everlasting Father, and he's the Prince of Peace. We can run into those names by our praise and by our faith, and we can be safe in times of trouble. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But, you know, uh, next Sunday, I'll just take a little commercial break here. Next Sunday, we've got two services, going back down to two for the last Sunday of the year. we got 9, 30, 11, 30. So if you're in town, please come back. And then that night, we're doing a special 10 o'clock. So from 10 to 12 midnight, we're going to be having church. And your first hour is going to be food and fellowship and games. We're going to have a lot of fun. Bring your special dish, your mama's dish, whatever it might be. Uh, Bring your cultural dish, whatever it is that you guys bake, you know, whatever. Bring it in. It's your specialty. We want to eat it. We want to try it. And then we're going to have a lot of fun. Then from 11 to 12, we're going to have a service. We're going to have praise and worship. And then we're going to have communion together the last day of the year. It's going to be a special way to close out our year. We're going to have a message. And then we're going to pray together in about an hour. It's about an hour service. And pray out the old year. Pray in the new year. Then if you'll stick around, we're going to have about 20 minutes of some pretty epic fireworks outside on our property. Already got it approved by, the, by uh, you know, the fire department and other places, so they said, go for it. I said, well, we have a gas station right beside, so it's all right. Just don't point at the gas station. So. <laughs> all right, here we go. We'll make sure we'll clear out the gas station before anything happens. Then we have, we start off our year on January the 7th with uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting, so make sure you connect with us on that. The one-year Bible challenge starts on January 1st, so read the Bible through with us. And then in our fast, uh, during the 21 days, we have a 7 a.m. prayer call. Then we close out the month of January with our prophetic prayer conference called the Freedom Conference. So make sure that you guys, yeah, get signed up, get registered for that. It's a powerful conference we did last year. We're having Pastor Leanne Sosby back again with us. Then as well, Dr. Mark Barclay will be with us as well. So going to be a great three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday conference. You know, when I'm thinking about the name we're going to introduce in just a moment, it, goes, it takes me back to where it was first mentioned, and it was actually mentioned with Gideon back in the book of Judges. And if you know about Gideon, Gideon is a Bible character I think that we can all relate to because of his struggles and him, him overcoming and God bringing him out of a place that looked like he was a nothing to, to bring him to a place where he became a deliverer for the people of Israel. And uh, I love the story of it. But uh, in this passage of Scripture, we have where the people of Israel, they were uh, being oppressed by the Midianites, and the Midianites came in, and they uh, would steal and, and destroy everything that the people of Israel would have, every harvest. It's like they could never get ahead. And something about it, whenever you get under the oppression of the devil, he tries to go after everything. And the people of Israel, that's what was happening to them. And thank God, God had mercy on them, even in their rebellion. And he, and, he, and he sent the angel of the Lord, the Bible says. And the angel of the Lord, as you hear that in the, in the Old Testament, the capital angel of the capital Lord, it is a, as a theophany. It is an appearance of the second person of the Godhead, Jesus, obviously, who appeared in the Old Testament. Now, he wasn't called Jesus in the Old Testament. But he was called the angel of the Lord when he would appear there. But he was the captain of the host, the heavenly host. And he appeared to Gideon and uh, began to call Gideon into his place. And after this whole event that happened with Gideon, Gideon said, I need a sign. Because obviously he didn't have the Holy Spirit, so he needed a sign. And, and so <clears throat> the Lord told him what to do to get an offering and get some meat out and different things. He prepared it, brought it to him, he said, place it upon the rock. And then the angel Lord, or Jesus, or the Lord put his staff on it. And, and supernatural fire came out of the staff and consumed the sacrifice. And in Judges chapter 6, verse 22, then we have this story of Gideon and how he responded to it. He says, And when Gideon perceived 
that he was the angel of the Lord. Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord, Yahweh, God, said to him, Peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. <laughs> then Gideon built an altar. You've got to remember, Gideon was already skittish. He was hiding from the Midianites. And then yes, Jesus appeared to him. And he gets a revelation that it is the Lord God, Yahweh, uh, that they are supposed to be serving, but they haven't been. He's kind of freaked out. And he said, be peace to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. Then Gideon built an altar there to the Lord Yahweh, and he called it the Lord Yahweh, Jehovah, is peace, shalom. And to this day, it still stands in Ophrah, which belongs to the Abiezerites. So the people of Israel had abandoned God, and they had gotten themselves into an oppressive state where they had no peace, but their life was filled with chaos. But thank God that the angel of the Lord came, Jesus came in his mercy and his grace to get the people of Israel out of their chaos and to bring them into peace. And that's where he revealed himself as the Lord, our peace, to Gideon. And the word peace in the Hebrew language means shalom. It means welfare. It means blessing. It means health. It means prosperity. It means protection. And, and many times Israelites would greet or they would greet one another or whenever they would leave one another, they would say shalom. They would pronounce this blessing of peace, of welfare, of health, of blessing, of protection, of provision upon them. And that's the name of our Lord. He is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. And when Jesus appeared here, the Lord appeared to them, he came to bring them peace, the peace of God to the land and the peace of God to their nation, to their people by bringing his rulership to them because that's what was happening. He wasn't just delivering them. He was bringing them back into covenant with himself. He was bringing them back to where they were submitting to the rulership of Yahweh. And so we're going to talk more about this name called Jehovah Shalom in the next, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. Try my best. It may go an hour. I don't know. I got another service. It can't go an hour. So 15 minutes. But we're going to go back and we're going to see what that name means a little bit more. But as well, how can we really get it operating in our lives? So my title is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Jesus is the manifestation of God's peace. And I can't, I can't be here on Christmas Eve and not, and not read the Christmas story. I'm not going to read the whole one, but I'm going to read the, one, the part where the angels appeared. How many people like that? Don't you like that story? I don't know how many times I've read it year after year, and I love this story. Luke chapter 2, verse 8 says, That night they, there were shepherds staying in the field nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. And he said, I bring you good news. You know, God doesn't want us to be afraid. You ever notice that? Every time he appears to people, he says, don't fear. Don't be afraid. Listen, fear is not from God. He's not wanting you to be afraid. I bring you good news. Everybody say good news. Aren't you so glad they didn't say, I bring you some bad news? They're like, great. <laughs> so glad you appeared in your glory. <laughs> I bring you good news that will bring what? Great sadness? No, great joy. Notice here that the good news brings great joy. So let me just add this in. I said it first service. I'll say it again this service. If you're lacking some joy, you might be lacking some good news. So I would really like to have some good news. I've just been having a, seems like there's just been bad news every corner, just everywhere I go. I just, I just need some good news. Well, open your Bible. It's full of good news. I mean, Jesus is the manifestation of good news. He said, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, he has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others in the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. I love this. Jesus, the manifestation of God's peace. And that was the angel's job right here. They came to, to, to declare God's plan for humanity, that all people everywhere could experience God's peace or the peace of God as they lived on this planet. That's good news. Because sometimes there's not a lot of peace around us. I don't know about you, but it, do you ever have to fight heaviness? Sadness. 
And you don't sometimes don't even know what it is. You don't even know how to put your finger on it. Things could be fine. You could have money in the bank and you could have a healthy body and it seems like everything's fine, but you just feel that heaviness. It's because we live on a heavy planet. This planet has a lot of people on it that's not following Jesus. And there's a lot of sinning going on on this planet. There's a lot of demonic spirits that are on this planet having sway, and so you're feeling the heaviness of it. But the beautiful thing is, is that I can still experience God, God's peace even in the midst of this. But I've got to be intentional about it. In Isaiah 9, 6, it says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called, come on, Wonderful Counselor. He's the mighty God. He's the everlasting Father of eternity. He is the Prince of Peace. I love it that Isaiah, thousands of years before that, began to prophesy of the coming of the child, the coming of the son, the coming of the Prince of Peace to this planet. That word prince obviously means governor or leader or ruler or Lord. He is the Lord of peace. He is the Lord of shalom. It's funny how so many people want the Lord's peace, but they don't want the Lord. <laughs> Thank you for your overwhelming grunts just now that you gave me. They want the peace of God, but they're not sure that they want the God of peace. But you can't have the peace of God if you don't allow the Prince of Peace to rule in your heart. But I love it that His peace is divine, supernatural force that enables us to overcome every enemy. It doesn't matter what our enemy is, the peace of God, it's an overwhelming, overflowing, supernatural force of heaven that enables us to overcome. In John 14, 27, in the Amplified Version, it says, Peace I leave with you. My own peace I'll now give and bequeath to you. Notice, this is not of the world. It's not of the world that the world gives. That's what Jesus said. I, I'm giving you my peace, supernatural peace. It's not worldly peace. So many times we want, you know, parents, come on, y'all ever been there? Where you're like, just give me some peace. Get your kids to bed, you know, trying to get everybody quiet. You know what I'm talking about. Here, we're in the holidays right now. You're going over to families' houses you might not want to go to. You might be having family in. You're not sure you want them to be in. I don't know what's going on with you right now. But sometimes we're just looking for some peace. Amen. Right? We're like, I just need some peace. What I'm talking about is not that. That's, that's just everything calming down. That, that's, that's rest, and that's good. But Bible peace is much stronger than that. Because that type of peace can be disturbed because of kids or because of, a, you know, an unruly wife or something, anything like that. <laughs> Just kidding. I, I, have a, I have a wonderful wife. She's awesome. She's beautiful. She's amazing. She's anointed. <laughs> you want to say some more? Is that what that means? You're funny. You're smart. You're... No. She is, actually. But the peace I'm talking about is the peace of God. It's, only, it's, only, it's, it's the only peace that you can really have in the midst of chaos in the earth. No matter what's going on. Jesus said this, do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourself to be agitated and disturbed, and do not permit yourself to be fearful and intimidated, cowardly and unsettled. Notice here that this supernatural peace that Jesus gives to everyone that will follow him, it has the ability within it so that you can actually initi initiate that peace so that you're not in fear that you're not being agitated or disturbed. You can actually be empowered not to permit yourself to be fearful, intimidated, cowardly, and unsettled. This peace is supernatural, and it's powerful, and actually you have within it authority to use it, to speak peace to your soul. Because really, the battlefield, really, that the devil is fighting with you begins in your mind. It's in your thoughts. It's in your emotions. If you want peace in your life, you're going to have to have peace in your soul. 
and it's supernatural peace. When you're all out of sorts and all out of order in your mind and all out of order in your, in your emotions, you're going to be out of order in your life. If you don't have God's peace operating in your soul, you're not going to have God's peace operating in your marriage. You're not going to have God's peace operating in your finances. You're not going to have God's peace operating in your body. But Jesus said, I'm giving you supernatural peace. That's good news. John 16, says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. Notice Jehovah Shalom giving, you, giving us his shalom, giving us his perfect peace. In this world, you'll have tribulation, trials, and distress, and frustration. Just because you have the peace of God doesn't mean everything just gets out of your life. No, but in the midst of it, you can have peace, and you can turn those troubles and trials and tribulations into triumphs. Come on. You can turn those things into great testimonies, testimonies of God's goodness and God's power. He said, I've told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In this world you have tribulation, trials, and distress, and frustration, but be of good cheer. Everybody say, be of good cheer. Take courage, be confident, be certain, be undaunted. Why? For I have overcome the world. I have deprived the world of its power to harm you, and I have conquered it for you. That's why I can, in the midst of whatever it is, begin to move into the peace of God. And I can be undaunted. I can be fearless. I, I cannot be agitated. I, I cannot be disturbed. I, I can walk in supernatural peace and confidence. Why? Because I know that he's already overcome whatever battle I'm going through right now. He's already defeated my enemy. He needs me to move into peace. You notice when Jesus was in the boat with the disciples and he's on the boat sleeping and this great storm came, and the disciples began to freak out. And they're wondering why Jesus isn't getting up doing anything about the storm. Because apparently it was so bad they could all die. Apparently the storm was so bad it could have killed them. But Jesus wasn't freaking out. Why? Because he said, let us go to the other side. He had already given the command. He had already given the instruction, we're going to the other side. So it doesn't matter what's going on all out here. We're going to get there in one piece and full of peace. But, of course, for their sakes, he got up, kind of bugged at them, and spoke peace to the storm. But notice Jesus might have been, had a storm around him, but he didn't have a storm in him. Until you can get the storm out of you, you'll never get the storm away from you you gotta, you got to get that storm out of your mind, out of your soul, out of your heart before you can walk in supernatural peace in your life. Jesus gave them clear instructions. Don't permit this. Because the peace of God is an aggressive force against the enemy when you enforce it. You can stand up in the midst of troubles and you can speak peace to your mind. And you declare peace to your emotions. And you declare peace to your thoughts. And you can declare peace to your marriage. And peace to your body. You have been given that authority and you've been given that supernatural force called peace. But you know, peace doesn't come just because we hope it does. Or just because we even read about it. Peace comes when divine order is established and maintained. Because you're going to have to work on the order of God in your life. In Romans 14, 17, it says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is the rule of the king. It's, it's, how, the, it's how the king rules his kingdom. It's the ways of the king. It's the righteousness of the king. It's where Jesus is king and his word is law in your life. Again, so many people want the prince of peace in their life. They want him. They want the peace of the prince. Sorry. But they don't want the prince to be lord of their life. The prince of peace to be lord of their life. 
And the kingdom of God is the order of God. It's the ways of God. It's how God does things. If you don't have his kingdom in your mind, you'll not have his peace in your life. You're going to have to bring order to it. And the order is where Jesus is Lord. And again, his word, his ways is law. The word of God is not a buffet table. I don't just get to pick and choose what I want and what I don't want. I keep it in the book. Because so many times I've not heard this over and over and over again with people. Well, that really, I mean, I know that's what the Bible says, but that, that doesn't really mean that for me. I mean, God knows my heart. Well, yeah, he does know your heart. And he knows whether it's good or bad. And his ways never change just because your situation is different than somebody else. He's still the prince of peace. Isaiah 9, verse number 6 says, For to us a child is, is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. He is the prince of peace, and the, gov of his, the increase of his government and of his peace, there shall be no end. Notice here again, he is the prince, the Lord of peace, of shalom, and that the increase of his government and of his peace there shall be no end. It, they're connected. Yeah. The government of the Prince of Peace and his peace are connected together. As his government increases in your life, so will his peace increase in your life. Right. He has got to be the Prince of Peace in your heart, in your soul in your mind, in your life, the Prince of Peace. You might have thought, why does Pastor have this nativity up here? Well, it's not just for decorations. But I, I want to give you an, a, an illustration of, of what happens in people's lives. Obviously, you can see that who is the center of the nativity? Okay, for the rest of you, it's Jesus, in case you didn't know. know some of y'all were struggling out there. So Jesus is, now if you ever saw a nativity and, 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 and the, you know, you, you have Joseph in the middle and Jesus back here, what would you do? You'd probably walk up and go, I don't know who this is, but uh, <laughs> you, you'd probably just go ahead and do it. I would. I'm, like, I'm sorry. I don't care if anybody gets mad at me, but I'm, I got to rearrange this. This is out of place. Yeah. Why? Because who's supposed to be in the center? Jesus. What is this all about? But so many times, this is what happens in people's lives. They want Jesus, but they're not sure if they want him here. Lots of times what people do is they want Jesus, but we're going to put Jesus out here. Jesus is still in this picture, but we're going to put the money in the center of my life. And they put Jesus over to the side. Listen. You cannot put money in the middle of your life and expect to have the Prince of Peace to manifest in your life. I don't care how much money you make. You'll not operate in true peace in your life because no amount of money brings peace. You all know what I'm talking about. But so many times people do that. They put money in the middle of their nativity or their life. And all the while, Jesus is on the outside, but no peace is really there. And then people do this. Instead of having Jesus in the middle, they'll put their career. Keep your, keep your staff there, sir. They put their career in the center. Now, this, this could mean money, but it might not be money because not everybody's career makes a bunch of money. But sometimes what people love or what they feel called to or what they're passionate about, they put that and they make that the center of their life. They decide how much church they go to based upon their career. <laughs> they base their place where they live based upon their career. That one really got a lot of amens right there. <laughs> Your career can never take the place of Jesus. Jesus has always got to be in the center 
of your life. He's got to be in the center of the whole scene of your life. If not, you don't have peace. You might put your career first, but you'll lose your family. You might lose your marriage. You might lose your finances. You might lose everything else, but you've got to have peace operating. And the only way you can do that is by having the Prince of Peace in the center of your life. Then here's the last one. Y'all ready? Because if I haven't got you yet, I'm going to smack you now. People put their family in the center of their nativity. Listen, I love my wife and I love my kids, but they're never going to come between me and God. And I'm not going to make decisions for my life based upon my kids and violate God's ways. I told my kids, listen, you're not automatically going to heaven because you're a preacher's kid. You can sit here in this church. You can grow up in this church. You can hear all the stuff we're teaching. But if this is not real to you, if, if you don't make Jesus Lord of your life, if you don't follow him, then you'll end up going to hell one day. You can't stand before the Lord and say, well, my daddy was the pastor. That's not going to work. You have to have an authentic, real relationship with Jesus yourself. And I won't make decisions on my life based upon my kids. I will not violate God's laws just to make my kids happy. So many times people do this in their life as they make decisions about their kids, whether they're small, whether they're teenagers, or whether they're adult kids. And they make decisions that violate God's law, hoping to win them over for the Lord. It doesn't work. Because if you get out of peace, peace will never come to your kids. I don't care how old they are. I've watched people do this over and over and over again. And they don't just lose their peace. They lose their kids in the process because they got their kids or their wife or their, or their, or their husband in the place of Jesus. Jesus has got to be in the center. Whoa. Sorry, Joseph. Of your nativity, of your life. So I want to close with, with that thought. Who's, who's in the center today? Because we can say Jesus, and hopefully the people that said Jesus really means this. We can say Jesus, but it's proven out by who you're allowing to rule in your life. Does Jesus rule? Is he governing your thoughts, your emotions, your decisions, your decisions, your marriage, your finances, your children? Is he, in, is he the one in charge? Is his word the one that you're following? Are you, you going to the Word and living your life by the Word? Or are you living your life by what you think is best? Again, you'll never have true peace. You'll never have the peace of God in your life until you have the God of peace ruling in your heart. I want you to bow your heads, close your eyes just for a moment. On this Christmas Eve service, let me ask you these questions. Do you have Jesus in the center of your life, in the center of your heart? Is he truly Lord? Is he the Lord of your life? Are you operating in true Bible peace? Maybe at one point in your life, Jesus was that to you, but now you've allowed whatever things in life to get you off base. And no longer are you operating in the peace of God because he's not the prince of peace of your life. Or maybe you've never really given your life over to Jesus Christ. Maybe he's never really been in your nativity scene. Maybe you've had your own nativity, but it was minus Jesus. Today is your day to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life, to accept him and follow him as Lord, to receive him as Savior. Today's your day if you're someone that's walked away from God. Today's your day to come back to him because Jesus loves you. The Father is waiting on you. So if you're in this place right now and you say, listen, Pastor Greg, I, I really need to put Jesus in the center of my life. Either he's never been there or I've allowed other things to get in the way. But this day, I'm going to surrender my life and my heart completely over to the Prince of Peace. And if that's you, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand and keep it up because I'm going to pray for you. Say, Pastor, that's me. One, two, three. Three, raise your hand and keep it up. Raise it up and keep it up. Raise it up and keep it up. Let me pray for you. Father, right now, I pray for every individual that has their hand raised. May Jesus 
May Jehovah Shalom, may the Prince of Peace come and rule in their spirits, in their hearts, and in their minds, and in their lives. What I believe is they call upon you that you will save them, restore them, deliver them, help them, and be the Prince of Peace in their life. I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Now everyone lift up one or two hands and let's call upon the name of the Lord together. Say this out loud. Jesus, Jehovah Shalom, my Prince of Peace, I call upon you. You are the only hope and you are my only Savior. I humble myself before you. I repent of my sins. And Jesus, I call out to you, save me now. Give me your peace. Change me. And I believe that I receive your mercy, your grace, and your peace right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare you are the Lord of my life from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, give him a good hand clap. I want to say congratulations to everyone that prayed with me and really meant that because sometimes they say, well, does a prayer get you saved? Well, it does if it's mixed with faith. If it does, if, if, if you have a humble heart and you humbled yourself before the Lord and gave Him your allegiance in that prayer and called upon His name. Because the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So congratulations. But there are some next steps you need to take. The first one would be get out your cell phone and you can either text FLC got saved to 45888. It's on the screen here on, on the screens beside of me. You can do it that way, or you can do the QR code, which is really easy, by your phone. Uh, and that'll take you right to the link to fill out. It's a short form, take you less than 30 seconds. Or you can do the connection card. If you want to do that, you can drop that in one of our giving stations on the way out today. And that way we can know about your decision. Because this is not the end of everything. This is the beginning. So you need to take next steps. And this is the next step. Here's another next step come back to church next Sunday. Let the Prince of Peace govern your life and bring you back to church so that you can find out more about the names of God. Next Sunday, Brother Ray is going to be preaching on Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner, the Lord our captain, the Lord our victor. I think he might be a little fired up on that next week, so you might want to come and and be a part of it. it's going to be powerful, okay? But another next step is, is that we have Grow Track, which is a three-week uh, journey on Sunday, right after the second service, whereby you can uh, discover your God-given purpose. And if you want to become a part of this wonderful family of believers here, it starts the very first Sunday of January. And don't forget about, again, the Bible reading plan. You can, you can do the one-year Bible reading plan. You can look that up online if you don't know what I'm talking about. One-year Bible reading plan. That's all you got to put in, and you'll find it all over the place. But you can do it on our website at the beginning of the year. We have it there available. And then as well, fast with us. Do that prayer and fasting with us at the first of the year. Well, what we did was is that we put this call out, at really the latter part of, of Thanksgiving, for all the people that's a part of our church. Now, if you're a guest here, um, we understand this is, uh, you can be a part of it if you want to, but there's no pressure there. We have a special Christmas offering today for Jesus, and we talked about that during our series on gratitude because of all that Jesus has done for us. But there are just special times that we want to bring Him a special offering, and why not be on Christmas Eve? It's a great day to do that on. And we, we cast the vision for it to be something that's uh, generous, something that's sacrificial, something that's honorable to, the, to our King. And again, there's no pressure. This was all out of your heart, what you wanted to do. But you can give online. I know that we have ways to give behind me on the screen. So you can give that way today. You can come up and physically give something in the bucket. Uh, maybe you've already done this already. But it would be good to, to, even if you've already given online, you can take an envelope and 
pretend you're giving today. It doesn't matter. But what I'm saying is, if you want to just physically come up here, and, and even though you've already given, just put something in there just as an act of faith. Say, Lord, you know I've already given online, but this is my act of faith. I'm giving to you as an offering. You can do that as well. So I want to pray over our offering, and then uh, after I pray, you guys can come and bring your Christmas offering. And then right after that, Susie will be up here just to give us a couple things. And then Delilah's going to come up at the end and, and close us out with uh, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. All right, so it's going to be good. So stay through for the last, next couple minutes. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. You have done so much for us. We love you. Jesus, thank you for coming. Thank you for being the Prince of Peace. Bless this offering today and use it for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said amen. You can bring your offering now and put it in these baskets up front. All right, all right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Merry Christmas. And again, all the reminder that if you are a first or second time guest, make sure you get connected with us. Um, stop by the welcome table that we have right outside. And that's right, first and second time guests. If you're a second time guest, we've actually got these really cute t-shirts made for you guys. So stop by that tent there, um, the table. And then also um, want to remind you that if Right afterwards, we have cookies and hot cocoa out there. Now, the hot cocoa is not here. You would make it yourself tomorrow or this evening. So if that's at every exit. Make sure you guys get those sweets um, that we normally do every holiday season. And again, just get plugged in. I'm going to welcome up the prayer team up here. So for those of you that wanted some extra prayer, they'll be up here. And don't forget, come back next week for our services and our evening New Year's Eve services. So prayer team, come on up. And I'm going to go ahead and pray over you guys for just a moment. And then we'll have Delilah come up. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for another powerful Sunday. Thank you so much for your son that you sent you sent to us. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Your son has been so good and you have blessed us so much. We honor you today and we thank you for this time that we can hear your word, Father. And we ask you to just bless everyone that's here today and give them traveling mercies on their way home. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. yourself a merry little Christmas let your heart 